Hi, I run my own mobile disco and needed a pair of powerful speakers to use on my discos, both indoor and outdoor gigs. Um, it's not all about power, the sound and bass content are also very important, parts to every speaker. I had often seen these speaker bass boxes in car boots and noted how a box with a speaker inside another box gave a really good sub bass. So I decided to design my speakers with this in mind. If you follow the drawings and instructions that are shown in this video, you will end up with an excellent pair of speakers. Here is the finished product. Uh, this was one that was being on test outside, uh, happened to be my son's birthday. And this is a front view of it. I've just painted it uh, with speaker black. Here are the design drawings. Uh, this is the inside, what you would see inside the cabinet. A 15 inch base driver and a 12 inch mid kick bin driver. And also you've got an electric twitch at the top. The panels of wood were cut from 25mm thick MDF. You can get this from any local DIY store. Here are the panels and their dimensions. I will explain each panel as we go along. This is the front panel. You do need to make sure you've cut out for your main kick bin and also your tweeter and uh, your sub ports. Showing a close up of the sub ports here. Uh, this is the glue I used, an excellent PVA glue and you don't need to screw these cabinets together, you can put them together with pins and the glue and uh, the pins are just to hold it together while the glue is drying off hard it's stronger than the actual wood in fact and this is the sort of joint you want to end up with so basically you put the top, bottom and two sides together first then you want to add doweling rod inside about an inch square showing you a close up there don't worry about having excess glue glue is good because you want to seal the box you don't want any air escaping whatsoever now the um, dowling for the front part of the panel needs to be the thickness of the front panel and also add about 5 mil so it drops slightly below the top of the panel so you've got a protective edge use clamps if necessary to hold the dowels in place doweling rod in place because it will try to bow and also make sure it's a nice tight fit before you attempt to glue it in if necessary hold it with another bit of doweling just to keep it in place until the glue dries next up is your inner boom box if you like this is the side panels these two panels must be put at the bottom of the sides of the cabinet. Again being held with a bit of doweling, you need to smear plenty of glue on those panels before you put them in. There's me keeping them clamped with a piece of doweling rod. Don't be scared to put glue around the edge to seal them. You don't want any air escaping at all. Nice tight fit up against the doweling rod you've already put in. Now you've got the top part of the boom box and to fit that in you need to cut out two cutouts to allow for the doweling in the back of the box. You should end up with two cutouts. Again a nice tight fit so that it slots in nice and tight. There's another one there showing the doweling at the bottom and where the slots fit into. Plenty of glue, don't worry about using plenty of glue, you need it nice and sealed tight. Otherwise if you get air escaping, it will not work. Right, you need to cut out the top panel of the boom box to go in. In this case, uh, you need the inner dimensions for a 15 inch driver. Don't forget that, the inner dimensions for the bolts. And when you fit it, use the doweling as your porting slot for your uh, air to escape through the port. After you've fitted that front baffle panel um, in the base boom box part of it, 
um, that's what it should look like okay so uh, the the bottom there where the panel comes down to the dowling is just the right size for the air to escape out of there nice and fast so you get a good bass response at this point it's worth thinking of filling this boom box with some roofing uh, wadding this will effectively make the box twice its size also drill the hole in the top panel for the cable to run through don't forget it will be too late once you've sealed it you can get the loft insulation at any DIY store if you wish to fit um, hole holders in the bottom of your cabinets now is the time to do it as you see here I've marked across there so I get a central position and then I get my pole holders marked around them and then marked my pen marks as to where I was going to drill my holes here's a close up just to show you it depends whether you're going to use them or not you can also put casters on the bottom which is a great help for moving these around before you finally put the drivers in don't forget to um, make the hole in the back for your socket panel to go in um, also uh, your crossover unit can also fit in there as well you'll need that for your speakers to sound correct uh, crossover will adjust your sub your kick bin and your tweeter well here you see um, a picture of the finished unit before painting also you can see I've put two side handles in again you can do this before you fit the drivers in don't forget also the front main panel where you fit your 12 inch kick bin uh, your kick speaker in um, you might want to screw that in so if necessary you can uh, move it for any maintenance you might need to do on the internal sub unit and also um, you can do all the wiring through the back socket uh, where your socket panel is um, so that's easy enough to do but make sure your cables are fed through to the back through your wadding okay um, also I have put a piece of supporting dowling at the bottom of the sub front panel um, so to support it so you don't get any resonance on the panel so um, that's a good idea to do a good idea to do that all right then you won't have any problems here are a couple of photos of the unit under test before final painting um, they work very well in the test um, they rated about 400 watts and they worked really really well this photo here shows you um, the four panels how many you will need um, to do the job and what sizes to cut them to uh, but as I said most DIY shops will cut these panels for you I've also put instructions on there so you don't forget uh, anything while you're fitting the panels um, again don't forget to put the wadding in um, stick it with uh, spray glue uh, to the insides of the cabinet it will make the cabinet appear twice the size it actually is and the base response will be much much better also um, don't forget to uh, put a crossover in um, this will control your sub base unit at the bottom uh, your mid range and kick uh, unit at the front and also your tweeter uh, so it's important you have a crossover you can also do it as a, a three-way system using a computer software but that's a little bit more involved and it'll take me a little bit more to tell you about it but these units work well as they are and there's a little bit of footage at the end to show you just how well they do work hope you like these units enjoy building them and um, enjoy your units when you've built them. Thanks. Bye.
morning. Nice and now, it's fucking cold as well, it's been in the freezer. Oh nice, so as if I'm cold enough. I've got Barry doing Jaeger Meister. Woo, fuck. Woo! Got it, got it. Is it recorded? Yeah. <laughs> 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 